I am Anthony from Hatchlersnet. In this video, I will be covering an individual topic from my book, The 21st Century Workplace, a HR and EEO guide. If you like what you hear, please check out the Amazon affiliate link in the description or visit my website at tony.hasledge.net. That's T-O-N-Y dot H-A-S-L-A-G-E dot net. Thank you. I am Anthony from Hatchersnet. Today we're going to talk about general ethical concerns. Sometimes people confuse ethics and morals. For many people, they are the same thing, but in actuality, they help us build our belief system. Ethics are objective beliefs, while morals are subjective beliefs. Ethics are usually inherent to the laws of the community and are the same amongst its members, while morals are opinions that one person decides upon for themselves based upon information learned from a combination of resources. To state it simply, ethics define right and wrong while morals determine good and bad. Ethically, we know that it's illegal to steal bread, thus we know that stealing bread is wrong. Morally, we also know that it is bad to steal bread, but it is good to steal bread if someone would die without the bread. In certain circumstances, as shown in the previous example, sometimes we ignore ethics in favor of morality. However, the situation is that we live in a community where the law has more weight than our beliefs. Thus, ethics must be an overriding basis for all of our decision making, even if one's morals suggest otherwise. Ultimately, ethical decisions protect the organization in addition to yourself or others. For example, uh, accepting and receiving gifts. It is almost always a bad idea to accept gifts from an external resource. From the outside, it may seem like some type of bribe. The exceptions to a rule are the results of cultural traditions. In many Asian cultures, the exchange of gifts is customary prior to the discussion of business. In certain parts of the world, it is a common practice to send gifts to someone who has provided some type of assistance as a thank you. Giving gifts is not necessarily safe internally either. Gifts between coworkers for birthdays or holidays does not typically raise an eyebrow. But gifts exchanged between a supervisor and subordinate may be seen as some type of impropriety occurring. When a gift exchange does occur in a workplace, it is encouraged that gifts not exceed $25 in market value. Those above that specified amount should be returned with a polite letter as to why it's being returned. For whom gifts are exchanged outside of the workplace, provided they are not those in which they conduct business officially, are their own concern. For example, receiving a gift from a relative is acceptable. Uh, receiving a gift from a coworker who socializes outside of work is also acceptable. Receiving a gift from a coworker at work must be done according to workplace policies. However, receiving a gift from a contractor that is associated with the workplace is not acceptable. The simple lesson is that if gifts, be they financial or otherwise, are in any way related to the workplace, follow the rules. Although if you do not wish to or cannot keep a gift or and are unable to return it, donate it to a worthy cause. Next we have conflicts of interest. A conflict of interest can occur in any numbers of ways, the most common being compensation and employment. For this discussion, compensation does not necessarily mean only pay. It means any financial gain. For example, trading privileged information for compensation is highly unethical. If it is done to gain an edge in the financial markets, it is a felony known as insider trading. The term moonlighting means to hold a second job. It's also the name of a great 80s detective show, but I digress. Back in the age when most jobs were 9 to 5, those who had a second job had them at night and were called moonlighters. Conflicts of interest in employment arise when what occurs on one job directly impacts the other. For example, it is never a good idea to work for two companies that are in direct competition. It is worse if the positions held at both companies are high-level administration. For both sides of the argument, it can be argued that someone is using information they garner from one company to seek some type of gain, be it financial or otherwise. It can also be seen as corporate spying, no matter if any wrongdoing is actually being conducted. Next up is misuse of position and resources. To misuse one's position is the misuse of one's name, title, and authority. To provide an official quote, 
when they are not authorized. Utilizing a job tile for perks or using one's authority to get one's way is very unethical. Stanley once said that with great power comes great responsibility. It is a valuable lesson to learn, one that has been with us since the origins of the Bible. No matter where one works, it is never a good idea to use the workplace resources for personal reasons. There are some limited exceptions that each place may permit, but performing external business at any workplace should be frowned upon. Nepotism. Historically, nepotism occurs between relatives at the workplace. Perhaps a brother lands a job, talks up his sister, and now she's working there too. Other times, it is a couple, married or otherwise, who may or may not have first met at the workplace. Where the problems normally occur is when one becomes a direct supervisor of another. Nepotism smacks of impropriety without even trying. Those on the outside looking in always see favoritism being played, even when there is none. However, there is also the issue of drama from home finding its way to work. It is always best to avoid the situation and, if necessary, assign someone to another department. Other concerns. Bribery. The illegal acceptance of money or other valuable considerations in exchange for special favors from public servants having to do with their official duties. Influence peddling. When a public employee attempts to influence a governmental decision in favor of a third party in which the employee has an interest. Information peddling. Officials who are privy to information not available to the general public and use it to their own advantage, monetary or otherwise. Think of it like insider trading. Financial transactions. When a public servant has a direct or indirect financial interest that directly conflict with the responsible performance of the job. Gifts and entertainment. Uh, this is a form of bribery. Outside employment. Part-time employment consulting, contractual retainers, and self-employment that utilizes government employment status as a means to garner work and may also use governmental property to assist in the work. This is known as double dipping. Future employment. If a public employee intends to seek employment in the future with a firm he or she now transacts official business with, the tendency may be to give favor treatment to this prospective employer in hopes of encouraging a job offer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please post a comment and then remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. We would also like to thank our contributors and patrons for supporting this video. If you wish to add to the discussion, post a comment below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledgenet and our website at hasledge.net.